You are now watching the Queen Chama. So hey guys, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Chama Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we are going to be talking about the show, The Proud Family. As you guys know, it has been announced that The Proud Family is coming back with a new show, a new reboot of the original show, and many people are excited. And I really love the show, The Proud Family, growing up. I feel like it's a really iconic show, and it's definitely a staple in Black history, and I feel like the show definitely touched on many different things and influenced me as a young viewer when I watched it. Now with the show coming back out, a lot of us are realizing that there are aspects within the show that have segmented different stereotypical components of being a black person and a lot of people are calling out the colorism the stereotypes and many more within the show and because we're in a different social climate now versus when the show first came out making these revelations about the show was actually pretty easy because we're a lot more informed as a people and we can apply this to the actual show that was made back then so the proud family first aired on september 15 2001 and came to conclusion in 2005 and i just remember watching every episode episode of the show even though I was really young but I love the show and I have it on Disney Plus and it's pretty much about 14 year old Penny Proud and she is growing up she's trying to gain her independence and faces typical teenager experiences in junior high with the help of her parents Trudy and Oscar and her grandmother Sugar Mama Penny faces all sorts of comical events the Proud family is a rare gem because it has a black girl as a protagonist it's so hard to find shows with black characters as a protagonist instead of side characters for the most part the Proud family is rated pretty well by anybody who's ever watched it it's entertaining, it's original, and it definitely shows more light on the Black experience versus any of the other cartoons that were out during that era. And I was really excited for it to be rebooted because I feel like a lot of the kids today kind of are deprived of good comics to watch, good characters to follow. And I feel like this show will definitely come back and positively influence a lot of our young Black youth. Now, I wanted to go over some of the things that I saw on the internet about what people thought of The Proud Family. So someone said, The Proud Family is a rare gem because it has a Black girl as the protagonist. It's hard to find shows with black characters as a protagonist instead of a side character. And it shows a modern black family with a mom and a dad. A lot of shows have the father missing and just further plays on the negative stereotypes that black men are terrible fathers. Penny is a 14 year old girl that struggles to get through junior high and faces many challenges like bullying, sexism, equality, working a part time job and learning right from wrong. What makes the proud family so enticing is seeing a modern black family being loving and supportive towards each other. Penny's parents are very supportive and help her get through her problems. This this series also celebrates black history and black excellence by showing black characters working together and combating serious issues as well as celebrating traditions and cultural experiences through diverse characters. There are positive messages and role models in this series. Now on the second half of that someone did say there are some stereotypes in the show and sexist remarks that are made by male characters at times like Oscar Penny's father making comments about his wife nagging him and saying comments about women that are outdated and just rude. Gender roles like women cooking and cleaning while the men sit on their butts and watch TV are present but the women women do put their foot down when necessary and call out men and their problematic behavior like when they lie to get away from their parental duties. Innuendos are also present and suggestive language is bleeped out or whispered incoherently. Although this series is a breath of fresh air when it comes to representation, Penny is the star of the series and this series centers around a black family instead of the typical white family. Now those reviews were just reviews that I found online and I thought they were pretty relevant. It showed the positives of the show but it also did touch on like you said the innuendos and the stereotypes and some of the things that occur in the show that definitely do need to be discussed. So I've broken this video down into three main talking points, so let's get right into this video. Now, point number one is the realism of this show. The reason why we're making this video is because many people feel as though there is a lot of colorism going on, specifically with the character of Dijonay. Now, I don't know about y'all, but Dijonay was actually my favorite character. Not that we're even that much alike, but I kind of felt like, although, yes, yeah, she does emulate many of the stereotypes that are set for Black women, I do like her loudness. I like her proudness. I like her confidence. She's very bold, and I I feel like Dejanay was multifaceted despite her actual stereotypes of being the ghetto black girl. She was good at poetry, she was good at cheerleading, she was athletic, and I feel like that was the part that I liked about her because she actually was, if you ask me, the most multifaceted character within the series. But if you actually look at Dejanay, the dark skin, the blonde hair, stomach hanging out, her being overweight, those are things that are stereotypical. Those are things that are considered colorist because the other female characters in the show do not get that same push or that same force into their stereotypes. When 
you look at Penny, you see a, I guess, brown or light-skinned girl. Her hair is nicely done with pigtails to the side. She's dressed tastefully, she's dressed classy, and she looks like the average 14-year-old girl. Even when you see La Cienega, she has that spicy Latina stereotype where, yeah, she can be loud and she can be mean, she could be a bully, but because she has that spicy Latina look, she can get away with that, which is definitely stereotypical. And then you come to Dijonet and you get the same type of stereotype in that as well. Now, I wanna say this. I have experienced Dijonets in my life, you know, in comparison to other characters in the show, I have seen a lot of Dijonets, okay? I feel like Dijonets character is an authentic and realistic exemplification of many black women within the black community everywhere. But I also do feel like you have to be careful when you're making characters like this, just because we are in a social climate that will call people out for stereotypes as well as colorism. Also, the Gross Sisters are also back in the show. And as you guys know, the Gross Sisters are three sisters. One is big and fat, one is tall and skinny, one is short and stubby. And their character is painted blue. And for the most part, people never knew why they were blue. I thought growing up, it was just to show a different side of the main characters who are more colorful, they're nicer, they're the ones that get along with each other versus the mean gross sisters. But come to find out the reason why they were blue is because they were ashy. Now, I kind of feel like that is kind of comical in a way. I don't think that really plays on any specific stereotype to being ashy. I mean, black people do get ashy, I get ashy sometimes. But I feel like all of these different things do work cohesively. Yes, it is stereotypical to have Dijonet acting the way that she acts, but I feel like that actually was the point of the show. I kind of feel like the show was there to showcase different types of black individuals, a black family, and it also had positive stereotypes and negative stereotypes. Like one of the users said, most black shows, whether it's an actual sitcom or a cartoon, will show that the father is not there, a, not a two-parent household, black fathers are terrible, black fathers don't work hard. But in this show, you did see Oscar Proud, despite his proud snacks being nasty and never being successful, you did see Oscar Proud working very hard, trying to upkeep his family and trying to at least do something. He was really passionate about his business, you feel me? And that was something that was commendable to the extent where at least he's here versus not being there at all. You did see Dijonet with the stereotypical, I have a ghetto family. If you remember, Dijonet's mom and dad had so many kids. Dijonet had like all these different siblings. They all had names that were like spices. You had Dijonet, you had Paprika, you had all these different names. And that was pretty comical to have the names be that. But at the same time, that is stereotypical. That does occur in the regular black community, it does. Then you had La Cienega, you know, the rich Spanish girl, the spicy Spanish girl who was the bully, which does often happen in black society and black communities everywhere. And you had Zoe who was the awkward white girl. And I feel like the reason why she was there is because the many black friend groups across the entire nation and black communities, there's always that one white person that's there and she hangs with the black people or he hangs with the black people, but he's just always a little bit awkward and off. But the black kids still accept them just because they're cool and they're young and they like this person. Now, moving on to point number two is the colorism. Now, is this colorist? The easy answer is obviously yes. This is an example of colorism. This is an example of portraying the dark skin character in a bad light. This is an example of the dark skin girl having to be the one with the most heinous and the most grotesque characteristics attached to her character. And I feel like we have to be very careful, like I said, with portraying this. Although this was an authentic representation of something that does occur rapidly and constantly with black communities all over America and probably overseas as well. There are Dijonets, yes, there are people that act like her and there are people that act like her who are great people, but it is colorist to show that that dark skin character has to be like that because if we're being real, at the end of the day, yes, there are people people that act like Dijonet and those people do deserve recognition. However, all of the darker skinned female characters on the show are portrayed as either ghetto or extremely aggressive, which is really a common stereotype of dark skinned women. I feel like the show was very nostalgic and we did enjoy it. However, I feel that way because it was really one of the few black cartoons that we had at the time. And if all of the dark skinned female characters are portrayed stereotypically and aggressively, literally what message does that send to black children who are consuming this and watching it? And because the new reboot has not dropped yet, we don't know how they're going to play up these characters but I feel like they're gonna maintain exactly how the show was prior to 20 plus years ago because that is the point here that's that's what they want to do they want to make sure that we still have that nostalgic aspect from watching the show as young people versus now and I feel like they should but I also feel like they should balance it out with some of their content and making sure that they address things like colorism and they address things like that and I feel like they actually will if you guys didn't know they're gonna bring on Kiki Palmer to the show she has her own character in which she's an activist and the activist character actually kind of looks like Kiki 
Kiki Palmer in terms of skin color and the way how Kiki Palmer likes to portray herself. And some people were talking about why is this activist and this black woman, this black character have to be the angry, aggressive one. But I feel like we don't know yet. I feel like it might work out pretty well because I feel like if the activist character is going to be really good and actually show that, hey, these black women can be strong and passionate about certain topics and cover things that we do need to discuss, especially in today's climate, who's to say it might not be a positive addition to the show? We just don't know yet. It hasn't come out. I have hope for the Proud family because I feel like the Proud family is doing more good than it is bad. But I do feel like, yes, they do play into a lot of colorism and a lot of stereotypes that have been occurring for years and years and years. But I do also feel like that was the point of the show. Now, I wanted to state that I got this idea from a subscriber tagging me on a Twitter post. And this Twitter post was at written by Ella. And she said, look at how at Disney Plus portrays Dijanae in comparison to the other lighter skin characters. Dijanae looks like a caricature of an argumentative, fat, dark skinned black woman. And at this point, it's intentionally and continually portrayed dark skinned black female characters like this. Someone then came back and said, this is a reach. Our community has a huge colorist problem and the Proud Family has always been a show that has had tough conversations with a palatable delivery to find ways to make light of the struggle. Now this girl then came back and said, of course there's a Jamaican flag because it's always idiots like Unuek Shatshit. The portrayals of dark skinned black girls are caricatures and racism colorism has always been a huge problem with this cartoon from 2001. Which tough conversation has this show ever had? Someone then responded back to her and said, LMFAO, you just used a racial stereotype to dismiss someone's opinion about your claim of a show being bad for using racial stereotypes. Now, I kind of feel like, yes, I understand where written by Ella is coming from, but I really just don't like her delivery and some of the things that she's saying because at the end of the day, like that user said, you can't use racial stereotypes to dismiss someone else's opinions. But what Ella is saying is that the show has continuously portrayed dark-skinned Black girls as caricatures through racism and colorism. And I agree. I definitely think they have done that. And I just hope that they are able to tackle that and understand that we don't hate Dijonais. We understand Dijonais exist in everywhereville America, in everywhereville, everywhere else. There are Dijonais everywhere. And I feel like it's important to put that character out there. But I want to see some change in the character. Although these girls are a bit grown up, maybe Dijonais has changed just a little bit. I don't know. But we'll see when it comes out. Now, my third and final point is what solution do we make? You know, um, I kind of feel like at this point, I'm to the point where, yes, I like to complain about things and voice my opinion and make my commentary but I also want to make sure that we have solutions. There was a girl on Twitter who was replying back to all of the backlash that Dijanae was getting and she said I see what you're saying but you also have to remember in the black community we do have women like Dijanae. Don't get me wrong they most definitely could have pulled her shirt down and not have her stomach out like that. I honestly love Dijanae but I don't want the writers to stereotype her too much. My favorite thing about her is how she can be loud but show a different side when she does her poetry. I do want the writers to give her a soft side other than just her taking care of her siblings. I I also want the gross sisters to be shown in a better light because there is an activist character and hopefully she can bring up the conversation about Dijanae and the gross sisters. I know it's hoping for a lot from people who like to write stereotypes, but can they change though? We shall see. And I feel like that's a great way to propose a solution. A lot of us can complain and do those types of things. And yeah, certain things do deserve some backlash and do deserve commentary and conversation if they're very important. And this conversation is important because this is a very influential and impressionable show that a lot of us watched growing up and a lot of our younger siblings and younger youth and our kids are going to be watching this reboot because it is such a great show but the solution for me is again like she said making sure that these characters are versatile and tackling some of those hard conversations especially because now that we're in a social climate where it's acceptable to talk about colorism and stereotypes and all the things that women face and those types of things I feel like this would be a great show and platform to do so I also want to propose the solution that we need more black cartoons why is it that when I turn on my tv and I barely watch cartoons because I mean I'm grown at this point and I don't have any kids or any younger siblings, but there are not that many cartoons out here that are showcasing black families or black characters, anything just for black girls and black boys to look up to. And I feel like there's a lot of animators who are super talented that are not just working for Disney and Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network and things like that. I feel like there's a lot of black creatives that definitely should get into animation and try to syndicate their designs and their drawings and their characters through actually putting out shows and stuff because we really do need to see it. I would love to turn on Netflix and watch a black cartoon show and when I do have children I would love for them to turn on Disney Channel and see more black characters for them to look up to. There are so many black people that are creative and there's so many black characters with stories to tell whether it's actual non-fiction or fictional characters that can come out and influence these kids and influence people who just love cartoons so much more than what we've gotten over the past 20 something years. I feel like the Proud Family reboot will actually be a good thing. I don't agree with the girl written by Ella by saying cancel the show. I don't think the show should be canceled but I definitely think that they should really evaluate how
how they're about to portray these characters. We're in a different social climate now that we're in the 2020s and moving up. And I feel like now is the time for us to really tackle some of these conversations that a lot of us commentators have been having on YouTube and actually put them in to these cartoons that can affect kids because kids are really impressionable. We can't sit here and just say, oh, well, all they do is listen to all these different rappers and all these different negative influences. And then when we have shows that can actually help them, we want to cancel them. No, let's just change the conversation. Honestly, y'all, Proud Family, I would love to be a voice actor on y'all show. I'm very crazy and I could definitely get into character. If y'all want to hire me, y'all can hire me as a character on there. I don't even have to be there all the time. I could just come in every so often and I would love to be on that show. I really would. I love the Proud Family. I think it's a great show and I just hope that they understand that there has to be a solution to some of the stereotypes that have been portrayed through their show all this time. So all in all, I feel like the Proud Family does have the potential to be really influential with this new reboot. I don't think the show should be canceled like I said. I definitely do think they have been portraying colorism and stereotypes through their characters and although these characters do exist in real life and I do feel like they can authentically portray these people, there has to be a good balance so that it doesn't end up influencing people the incorrect way. What I really did not like was the creator Bruce W. Smith and his response to how people were giving a lot of backlash. I feel like he either should have said nothing at all or he could have just said stay tuned we have a lot of ways that we're going to actually combat some of the things that you're talking about. I can't wait for y'all to see this show. He got to understand that you can't just be petty just because the Proud family is successful. You got to really sit here and make people want to watch this because he turned off a lot of people who were either really excited or were already on the fence and skeptical about the show by his response on Twitter. I don't think it was appropriate and I don't think it was professional but I really hope that all of the writers, the producers, the creators and everybody that's working hard on this reboot can honestly understand that people just want to see black characters be portrayed correctly and accurately and also fairly and that's all I'm hoping for with this Proud Family reboot and I'm actually excited to watch the show. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a comment on my commentary down below. Also do not forget to follow me on all of my social media networks. Go tell the Proud Family I want to be on their show, okay? And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys! They dream me so I'm locked and you'll never catch me lacking Taking over hacking, he hooked, I'm the captain My pockets on bombastic, y'all bitches got a dollar in your pocket and some chapstick How you think I felt when I kept getting texts from a shorty You kept talking to who said she was your ex And how you think I felt when I found out all your lies You had no empathy even though you saw me cry And how you think I felt when I realized I got played I should've left you sooner and I should've never stayed And how you think I felt when my heart was really hurt That shit I did was petty but you got what you deserve I didn't like you when I met you